Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sandy, long time no see. I wanted to have this conversation with you tonight in reference to uh, of a lot of studies that I have found in reference to suicide and nursing. And what does that mean to you? Yes, I don't have my background right now, so I apologize, I'm in a different part of the house. It is crucial that we all listen to this. It is very important, suicide and nursing, what does this mean? This means that everything that we have been working on since 2017 and even before then, and talking about how nurses are going to get to that point. And as we know about the depression build up, and then we have you know all the symptoms of anxiety, not feeling as if nobody, you know, as if anybody is listening to what is happening, uh, the failed responses from administration, you know it's compounded itself and now we are at the point of no return and these statistics are alarming and these are from credible and i'll name them as well i'm just going to be building a powerpoint to for easier reference that you can take this to, to go talk to your peers about um more than 7,000 nurses responded to a national survey on well-being ranging from burnout to depression more than 400 nurses reported having suicidal ideation in the past year. That is 5.5% of the respondents, which nearly 1% higher than the general working force sample at 4.3%. The Mayo Clinic uh, Program on Physician Wellbeing and the American Nurses Association uh, was working on this study. Now, the, you can find a lot of this stuff. This is in the October 22nd, 2021. Uh, it was an article with Fox uh, 47, if you would like to look that up. And also 70% more, they're 70% more likely to die by suicide than female doctors. This is female nurses are 70% more likely to die by suicide than female doctors. Bringing down the statistics more that within the time frame of 2007 to 2018, this is not even COVID times, more than 159,000 suicides occurred during, during the study time frame. Of those nearly 2,400 involved nurses, 2,400 of those involved nurses, roughly eight and 10 of them were women. This correlates with an estimate indicating that there's an 80 to 85% of nurses are women and we are at high risk for depression, burnout and suicide within our profession. So we also have here set that it would be 17.1 per 100,000 compared to 8.6 per 100,000 among women in the general public, which is double the risk. So as we know with COVID, it is absolutely an epidemic. Frontline healthcare workers are exposed. This is not just nurses. We have nurses leaving the bedside because they feel unsupported. They are not being heard, and when they report, they are retaliated against. About 97% of our organization and the members that follow Nurses Against Violence Unite are female and in the healthcare industry, mainly nursing. And I am actually quite shocked that, um, and not shocked, because even though that we've been talking about it for all these years, it is now being acknowledged in all of these articles and these news articles that there's a real problem. So why is it so bad? Well, a lot of you know that mental health has been off to the side a lot. It, there's a high stigma in, in healthcare in reference to mental health and how it applies to you, how it applies to even us as healthcare professionals, going through massive amounts of anxiety, stress, burnout, depression. And that's not even including the familiar, uh, the familial issues that you may have that can be passed down from generation to generation that have not reared its ugly head yet. 
it's very scary to think about all of those that have not been diagnosed with a mental illness and we are diving in to take care of others completely ignoring the fact that we need help ourselves as a drowning nursing society not disregarding the males in the nursing profession because you guys have you know a whole lot you know you got the heavy lifting for some reason you guys get the heavy part of nursing where you know we appreciate your help but you should not have to do all the heavy lifting so that has nothing to do with suicide but you do also experience the same amount of trauma you experience the same amount of issues that we face and nobody can handle it better than the other. Everybody is a different person. So here is another article from the American Nurses, uh, American, Journal, American Journal of Nursing, and it's coming out for November 2021. It's volume 2121, number 11. It's suicidal ideation and the attitude towards help seeking and, you know, help seeking care. So say for instance, you know, how, if we don't know about it, if we don't understand mental health, how are we going to help ourselves with coping mechanisms, debriefing? How are we going to move on to the next version of our lives from having that, tra that trauma that we've had compounded from seeing multiple deaths, having people screaming at you, not, you know, and juggling large assignments, and then not being heard. After a while, what is this? This has been um, close to two years that this has been going on. So how much, how much more, how much longer is this going to continue? You're starting to see healthcare workers and including of course nurses leaving the bedside in massive amounts. Why? Because they can't take it no more. It's not just the mental health aspect. It's the fact that they're not supported, which is also highlighted in this article. So the World Health Organization in regards to depression, as we know, is a leading disability, a leading issue worldwide. When they did a study of 1,171 hospital nurses licensed in North Carolina, 12% found, were found to have moderate depression, 4% had moderate monitor moderate, I can't talk tonight, moderate severe depression, and 2% had severe depression. And this is according to the PHQ-9. These are high, um, these values are higher, but that is not even the people that are even uh, doing the survey, right? There are more people that haven't even done the survey. There are more people that are refusing to do any of these kind of things because they don't feel like they're going to be heard anyway. So what's the point? And I know I resonated with some of you guys out there. Other studies among nurses indicate that personal health problems, lower job satisfaction, job related stress, lack of supervisor support and workplace violence are associated with higher risk, a higher risk of depression. And so these are being outlined in this article, and this would be a great, if you're working on a project, I would highly suggest that you get these articles that I'm referencing. So they could not find any recent data in regards to depression and burnout and suicidal ideation uh, in this, in this uh, article. An ANA survey of 22,316 U.S. nurses conducted earlier this year, which this would be earlier this year in 2021, uh, stigma was among the reasons for not seeking mental health support. Yeah. Because why? As we've been saying from day one, and I keep saying this over and over again, it is vital that mental health is a part of taking care of the patient. We've gotten away from holistic care. We've gotten away from doing what nurses do best. How can you possibly think of all of the medical things and the lab values that you can see, which some of these lab values like alterations in sodium and potassium and UTIs, you know you can see that, but what does that really mean? Who knows what these really mean? because you're so busy trying to get through the NCLEX, you're not focusing on that. You're trying to graduate because you're so sick and tired of your nursing instructors that you just want to pass. You want to get, you want to, get to the next level of your life. 
I get it. I was there. But here's the thing, not understanding sodium levels, not understanding potassium levels, not understanding thyroid, not understanding any of these crucial things that are medical and that are measurable, that can make the mental health show, you know, uh, have the imbalance for mental health. So when you have the imbalance of mental health, what ends up happening? You can have delirium, you can have psychosis, which is kind of the same thing. You can have people that are normally, even in medications, if they're having a reaction to a medication, how do you know what you're looking for if you don't know? That is not saying there's anything wrong with what you already know. That's saying that we just need to do a little bit better as an educational society to help others understand that mental health and medical health is absolutely paramount when we're trying to, trying to take care of our patients. Again, not demonizing anybody. What I'm saying is there has to be a change in how we teach nurses. There has to be a change on how we talk about the things that we're seeing. We have to start talking about and not complaining and not doing anything about it. We're talking about talking about it and changing it, saying enough is enough. It is time to talk about the problems. It is time to get moving on the solution. Let's be solution-based instead of talking about it all the time and not doing anything about it. It's completely a different environment when you say, okay, all right, so I'm gonna to get together some of my, my members at work and we're friends and we're gonna have this conversation. Let's start building that. That's what Nurses Against Violence is about. We want to cultivate this growth. We want people to feel supported in your venture to change the narrative. Yes, it is vital. Yes, it is necessary. Is it going to be easy? Nothing is ever easy. Was nursing school easy? No. And therefore, you should not have to drop out for not feeling supported because you are absolutely capable and smart and brilliant to be able to hold not only get through nursing school, but also to be able to pass the NCLEX and have some of these nurses that are leaving the floors have been nurses for 20 years. We need you to help the new nurses that don't even know, except from a simulation. That is not okay, right? So how do you get a robot, right? A simulation to teach mental health? something to think about. So also, also what you'll notice in this article on page 26 is that they're talking about health seeking attitudes. Nobody wants to, nobody sees the importance in it, or they feel retaliated if they report it, or they feel like they're not supported if they say something, or if they go to somebody and talk to them, that they might feel like their peers, if they find out about it, or their employer finds it, finds out about it, that they're going to be regarded as not being a quality employee. There is a third party that's about to happen out there that will not be tied to your insurance. And that is something that Nurses Against Violence is actually currently working on right now, where you do not have to go that will be affordable for you to be able to talk about the things that you see and to relate to people that have been through the same thing as not only a group support, but also as individualized care to help you get to your next level, to how to survive and how to get through instead of surviving to excel in your life. These are things that what you don't see on the front end that Nurses Against Violence is working on the back end, as well as also a comprehensive education program called Forensic Nurse Academy. So, and that's even more exciting because then that's going to help not only myself, but it's on also give to you what I, I understand about what we need to learn in also mental health. So they talk about with this uh, burnout scale, which is the um, Maslick Burnout Inventory Human Services Survey, um, they measured three subscales of burnout, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and low sense of personal accomplishment was throughout nursing and those that they interviewed. For the suicidal ideation during the past 12 months, have you had thoughts of taking your own life? This is a question that was given to most of the folks that were uh, doing the survey. Um, 
they found that males out of the 7,300 roughly, 530 males, 7.3% felt that they were, um, that they had um, some suicidal ideation. For females out of the 7,378, 6,776, which was also correlates as 92.7% as of the 7,378, said that they had thought about suicidal ideation within the last 12 months. So is it real? It is real. Do we have to do something about it? Yes, absolutely. What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? This is the question and we have to stand up. This is the time. This is, this is where you get your voice out because we need nurses. We need CNAs. We need healthcare, frontline healthcare workers. And for any female nurses out there, any nurses period that feel like they're going to take their own lives, please reach out to the suicide hotline as well. If somebody hears this happening, please speak up, get them the help that they need, and even look into getting them to the closest emergency room for an evaluation. They may hate you, but I'm sure they'll thank you. We have to stick together. This is vital. This is necessary. This is what we have to do. All the best, you guys. This is Dr. Rizaldi, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you.